Hey, what's up everybody? Clifton Hill, Clifton WP. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new pro add-on feature that was added to the Cadence Pro add-on called Maintenance Pages. This basically allows you to create maintenance pages or under construction pages while simultaneously placing your website in maintenance mode. And in this video, we're going to create a few maintenance pages, some under construction pages and see exactly how this works. So if you guys are ready to check out this new pro add on feature, then let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so here we are with a fresh install of WordPress and I have the Cadence theme already installed. So if we go back here to the dashboard, go to appearance, go to themes, you'll see that Cadence is the active theme. If you don't have Cadence installed, just go ahead and click on add new theme. And Cadence is a free theme in the WordPress repository. So you'll do a search for Cadence. And once you do that search, you will see the Cadence theme. You can go ahead and install it, click on activate, and you'll have it live on your site. In terms of plugins, if we look at our installed plugins, I have the free version of Cadence Blocks installed. I also have the Cadence Blocks Pro extension and the Cadence Pro Theme add-on plugin as well. You are going to need the Cadence Pro Theme add-on in order for you to access the maintenance mode features. So if you see here, if I go to Appearance, go to Cadence, and we scroll down under the pro add-ons listings, you'll now see that we have a maintenance mode option. And here, if you just toggle this on, you will then have access to the maintenance mode page creation and the ability to be able to place your site in maintenance mode. Now, if you don't have the Cadence Pro theme add-on, it's very easy to get. Just go to cliftonwp.com slash cadence. That'll take you directly to the Cadence website. Now that is a affiliate link. And so anything that you purchase from the website using that link will generate a small commission that goes back to support the channel. You don't pay any more than what it's offered, but it does generate a commission for the channel. And of course you can always go directly to cadencewp.com uh, if you so choose and purchase the add-ons that way. Now Cadence is offering a 40% off Black Friday sale on the plugins bundle. So if we take a look at the essential bundle here, it is now $90 instead of $149 billed annually. And we have the full bundle, which is $132 instead of $219 billed annually. Okay. Both of them have the Cadence Pro Theme add-on in them, except the full bundle has access to all the ancillary plugins and website building tools that Cadence has to offer. And you also get access to all the future products and features as well. Also, Cadence is offering a very rare lifetime bundle discount of $150 off the normal price of $799. So you can get the lifetime bundle for $649. Essentially, you make one payment and you have access to lifetime support and lifetime access to the uh, full bundle and you can use it on as many websites as you want for as long as you want. So I recommend taking advantage of that so that you can have access to the Cadence Pro Theme add-on. Okay, let's go back to our site and take a look at what we can build with the Cadence Pro Theme add-on maintenance mode feature. Okay, so once you have the maintenance mode toggled on, if you look over to the left in the side menu here, you'll see under appearance and cadence, you'll see that there's a new link called maintenance mode. If you click on this, this will take you to all of your maintenance mode pages. Now I've gone ahead and built out some maintenance mode pages uh, and some coming soon pages already, but don't worry, we're gonna be building new ones from scratch. I just wanted to show you what's possible with the maintenance mode. Now, one thing that's important to note is once you've built a maintenance mode page or a coming soon page, your website, as long as that page is published, your website will now be in maintenance mode. So if I go to this website in an incognito window, I'll immediately be met with a maintenance mode page or a scheduled maintenance page, okay? Now, if we go back to our site here, let me show you some examples of what's possible with the maintenance mode pages. So over here, we have a very clean, minimalist maintenance mode page. It has a coming soon Lottie animation, and then we have the countdown, and we have an opt-in form to get notified when the website launches, and then our social media links. 
The next version of this is more of a dark mode version, but with highlights of blue. And it's just very simple, coming soon when it's launching with a countdown. We have this pill-shaped opt-in form here, and then we also have our social media links as well. The next version of the coming soon here is a two column coming soon where on the right hand side we have a full blown image with the social media icons overlaying the image. And then on the left hand side we have a stacked opt in or a stacked op notif notification form and a coming soon notification here. Okay. The next version is also two columns but with different styling. So I'll show you how you can achieve the same styling in your coming soon pages or any other pages that you're building. And we have the countdown, we have the coming soon notification, and then we have the opt-in form here as well. These next two are under maintenance pages. So this is the one that we saw earlier with this really uh, nice blurred background. We're using the gradient text effect on this text block for this heading. And then we have an actual contact form instead of an opt-in form here. Okay, and I'll show you how to style your contact form like this as well. And then the last one here is a two column under maintenance page where on the left hand side we have a Lottie animation, we have a nice headline, and then on the right hand side we have a contact form. So we're going to build out all of these using the maintenance mode feature. Okay, so we're going to get familiar with creating the coming soon or maintenance mode pages here using the new maintenance mode feature in the Cadence Pro theme add-on. And we're going to do that by recreating these maintenance mode and coming soon pages. And we'll start with this one. So this one is pretty simple and straightforward. It is a two column maintenance mode page where on the left hand side here we have the Lottie animation. We have our text and then behind that we have an image that has a blur effect, which is utilizing the new backdrop filter feature that was added to Cadence Blocks. We'll take a look at how that's done. And then over here on the right hand side, we have some text as well as a form created with the Cadence form block. So let's go ahead and uh, start by recreating this in a fresh install. So here we are in a fresh install of WordPress and we have the Cadence theme installed. We also have Cadence Blocks installed as well as the Cadence Pro theme add-on. From here, we're gonna go to the dashboard and then you're gonna go to Appearance and you'll see the Cadence menu item here. And under that menu item, you'll see the maintenance mode is active. If yours is not active, just go ahead and click on Cadence. Make sure you have the Pro theme add-on installed and then just make sure that maintenance mode is toggled on. Once you do that, you'll see the maintenance mode menu item here on the left underneath appearance and the cadence link. Click on maintenance mode and that'll take you here where you can go ahead and click on add new maintenance mode page. From here, it's going to ask you which template type you like to use. So you have the option of using the under maintenance template type or the coming soon template type. In this case, we're going to be utilizing the under maintenance template type. Let's go ahead and select that. Once you select that, you'll be presented with some pre-made templates that you can utilize right away. In our case, we're gonna be building from scratch. So we're gonna go ahead and click on start blank. Now, once you do that, you will be in the block editor for the maintenance mode pages. And just like all the other uh, custom post types, you have the block inserter available to you and you can insert any block in here to create your maintenance mode or coming soon page. Over here on the right hand side, there are page settings that are dedicated to just the maintenance mode page. And you'll notice here that you have the ability to set a background color. You also have a display priority. What this helps you do is when you have multiple maintenance mode pages, you can set which one will be the priority or which one will show up by adding a numerical priority here. So the higher the number, the higher the priority for that page, which means if I have two maintenance mode pages, and one is set to zero and the other one is set to one, then the one will be the one that shows up when people visit the website. After that, we have our user exceptions. So this is where you can set exceptions on who will not see the page when they visit the website. So you can choose that by user role or by logged in and logged out users. The final setting here is the expires 
settings option here where you can enable an expiration date and time. So you can set a time and a date here for when the maintenance mode page will expire. And once, it's ex once it expires, when people visit the website, then they will be able to see the actual website. They will no longer see the maintenance mode page there. Okay. All right. So now that we're familiar with the settings, let's go ahead and create our page. Okay. So first let's go ahead and title this page. We'll call it maintenance page one, and I'll go ahead and add a Lottie identifier there just because I'm going to be using a Lottie animation here. Next, I'm going to build the structure of the page to do that. I'm going to click on the block line, type a forward slash, start typing the word row, and I'm going to select the cadence row layout. I want this to be a two column row, and I'm going to go ahead and set the alignment to be full width. And also I'm going to select the row, move over here to the right, and select the block settings for that row. We're gonna to go to the advanced tab. And from here, we're gonna open up the structure settings. So I want this row to take up the full height of the page. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and change this unit here from pixels. We're gonna change that to VH, which is for view height. And I'm gonna set that to 100, okay? Next, what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna set the inner column height to 100% as well. And then here where we have the short menu, I'm going to change the vertical alignment to align to the middle. Okay, great. So now we can see our content is going to be right here in the middle of the page. The other thing that I want to do as well is I want to go ahead and eliminate all padding. So I'm going to select the row here, move over to the right. And here where we have the padding, I'm going to go ahead and unify the sides. And then we'll zero out the padding so that we have a complete control of the page. And now our structure is done. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start adding our text and our background elements to the sections. Okay, so let's start with working with our structure first, starting with the left hand side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open this up in list view. I'm going to select the row layout. And what I want to do is make sure that the column gutter here is set to none. That's going to bring everything a lot closer together here. Then the next thing I want to do here is I want to add in this section a background image. So I'm going to select the section, move over to the right, go to style, and then where we have the background image, click on select image. And I already have an image here. So some maintenance workers Let's go ahead and click on select. And now we have our nice image here. The other thing that I want to do is I want to blur this image. So I want to create a blur effect using the new backdrop feature that has been added to Cadence Blocks sections. Now, to be able to use this feature, there are a couple things that you're gonna need. One is you're gonna need an image in the background, which we've already done. The second thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a section that has a transparent background, okay? So this is very different from having uh, an overlay. So if you look over here, you select this section and move over to the right. If you scroll down, you'll see that we have the backdrop filter, which is new in cadence block sections. And then we have background overlay. Okay, so I can go ahead and add an overlay here if I wanted to. So just by maybe selecting a color and doing that, and you can see the overlay is coming in here. If you wanna see it more prominently, you can go ahead and increase it there, okay? That is adding an overlay, okay? But this is not the same thing as adding a backdrop filter. Okay, if you open up the backdrop filter, you'll see here that you use a drop down and there are these different filters. So you have the blur, brightness, contrast, grayscale, hue, rotate, and bird saturate, and sepia, okay? So typically the way it's supposed to work is you would select blur and then increase the size and uh, this should be blurring out, okay? But notice that it's not, okay? And the reason for that is because this is serving as the background section and uh, we can't apply a backdrop filter to its own background. What we need is another section on top of this one, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and set that up correctly. So we have the section, if we open this up in list view, row, two sections, we have the section, this is the section that we're working on. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and add another section. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign here, do a forward slash, Start typing the words section. 
and you'll see the section block here from Cadence Blocks. Go ahead and select it. And now we have our section on top of it. So if we open this up in list view, you can see here the section is inside of the first section. Okay. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply a background to this. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to the right. Make sure that you have that intersection selected. Move over to the right, go to style. And here we're going to select a background color and let's just select our darkest color, which is this one here, strongest text. All right. So now we can see where that section is. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some transparency to this. I'm going to add a 50% transparency, which is going to be 0 0.5. Okay. Let's just put that in the alpha field here. And now we can see through the section itself. Okay. The other thing that I want to do is I want this section to take up the entire space of its parent section here. Okay. So right now it's just taking up this space and there's nothing in it. So it's not expanded in any way but I want it to cover up the entire space. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to make sure that I have the section selected, move over to the right, go to advanced, go to structure settings. And what we're looking for now is the flex grow property. Flex grow property is going to allow this section to go ahead and grow, right? Expand to the full width and breadth of this container. Okay. So let's go ahead and just add a value of one, and you can see now that the section is now expanded to cover up the entire image, creating a kind of overlay in itself. So the other thing that we want to do here now is we can now go ahead and apply our backdrop filter and we're going to apply that in the actual section itself. So if I open this up in list view, you can see we still have that section selected. Let's close it up, move over here to the right. We're going to go back to the style tab, scroll down right below the background image. You'll see the backdrop filter. Go ahead and click on that drop down and here where we have the backdrop filter go ahead and click on the drop down and we're going to select blur okay you can already see the blur is starting to come in we just need to increase the size of the blur there so i'm going to go ahead and click on the slider here and just slide this over and you can see we have a nice little blur going on there it's just blurred just enough to you you can tell that there's a maintenance crew behind the image and it's blurred out you can increase this as much as you want you can create some really cool effects doing this uh, but I just want it to be at about a nine or a 10 or maybe even an 11. Let's go 12. All right. That looks good. Okay. So now we've set up our left column, our left section. It looks really good. The other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that the content we're going to add is going to be uh, centered or vertic vertically in the middle here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the short menu here and change the vertical alignment to middle. It's going to bring it down here to the middle. And now we're ready to go ahead and add our text to this nice blurred overlay. Next, we're going to go ahead and add our content to the left section here. I'm going to add four blocks to it. We're going to add a Lottie animation and three text blocks. So let's go ahead and start by adding the Lottie animation. So to get some Lottie animations, you can go to LottieFiles.com. Uh, that is this site right here, LottieFiles.com, and do a search for maintenance. It also help if you create an account, accounts are free, just go ahead and create a free account, or you can go ahead and get a plan uh, as well. If you want to use some of the pro Lottie animations that are available here. Okay. So I've already gone in and uh, accessed my account and then done a search for maintenance. And I can see the Lottie animation here that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. And what I'm looking for is the JSON URL here. Let's go ahead and copy that. And then we'll go back to our maintenance page and I'm going to click here in the plus sign and you can do a search for Lottie animations and that'll give you the Lottie animation block. I can also see it right here in the short menu. Let's go ahead and click on it. And now the Lottie animation block is in place. You're not seeing it because there's no, there's no animation there right now. Moving over here to the right though, you can see all the settings for your Lottie animation. Okay. The file source is a remote URL, which is that URL that we copied from here. Okay. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to replace this placeholder URL with the new URL for that Lottie animation. Now note that when you do that, you're not going to see it right away, but it is there. And we'll take a look at it when we preview the page. Okay. Over here, we're going to go ahead and add an area label for this, 
for accessibility. So I'm just going to say maintenance mode animation. So let's open this up in list view so we can see that that item is in there. Okay. Next, what we want to do is want to go ahead and add some text. I'm going to click on the vertical ellipsis here on the Lottie animation block and then click on add after in the menu that appears. And then we'll do a forward slash start typing the words text and we'll select the text block from Cadence. Let's go ahead and select that. From here, we're going to go ahead and just type the words we are, and then I'm going to duplicate this block. That's going to give me another text block. And then I'm going to type undergoing scheduled maintenance. And then I'll also duplicate this block and I'm going to type, we'll be right back. Okay. So now I have my text and my lot animation in place. So let's go ahead and style this. Okay. First thing that I want to do is I want all my text to be centered. So I'm going to select the first text block, select the last one that selects all of them. And then I'm going to click here in the short menu and align the text to the center. Okay. The next thing that I want to do is I want this text to be uh, a little bit thinner. So I'm going to select the text here, select the H2 tag, and we're going to change that H2 designation to a paragraph. Okay. Then I'm going to select the undergoing scheduled maintenance. I want this to be very prominent and large. So I'm going to select it move over to the right here under the settings, and I'm going to select that I want it to be at a 2XL size. Okay. And then for the line height, I'm going to change the unit to rems, and we're going to set a line height of 4.4. Okay. Let's bring that together a little bit. Okay. And then the will be right back. We're going to go ahead and make that the same as the uh, overlying text here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the designation to a paragraph. Now all I need to do is uh, deal with the spacing. Okay, so by default, the text blocks in Cadence have uh, some padding on the, excuse me, some margin on the bottom and the top. So let's go ahead and eliminate those and then set the ones that we want. So I'm going to select the first uh, text block here, move over to the right, go to advanced, and then under the margin, section here. I'm going to select the bottom margin and I'm going to go ahead and zero that out. Then I'm going to select the second text here, which is the undergoing scheduled maintenance text. Move over to the right, go to advanced, go to the top margin and I will zero that out. Okay. So now everything is uh, a lot closer together. Then here uh, at the bottom here, I'm going to select the undergoing scheduled maintenance again, move over to the right, go to the bottom and then we'll zero this out. Okay, and then I'm just going to add back in about an extra small space there. And then here for the uh, top one here, actually for the, select the main text here, move over to the right in the margin, and we'll add this as an extra small as well. Okay, so we have some nice balance and equal spacing. Okay, so far this looks uh, pretty good. We have our text. We have our Lottie, Lottie animation here, although you can't see it, but you will be able to see it once we preview this page. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and preview the page right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save to save all the work. And then I'm going to click on this link, which will take me to the page so we can see how it looks. All right. So looking at it here, we can see uh, our text is in place. We can see our Lottie animation and it is huge. So we can go ahead and fix this very easily. And we also need to add some padding around the content over here. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. So I'm going to come over here back to our page here. I'm going to select the section itself. So we'll make sure you have the section selected. I'm going to move over to the right and go to advanced and we're going to increase the padding for the section all around. So I'm going to unify the sides here and I'm going to bring that close. Let's make that uh, We'll make it an extra large. And then the other thing that I want to do is that that Lottie animation is uh, very big, right? So we want to control the size of that. So I'm going to select the Lottie animation. And if you have a hard time seeing it, just go ahead and click on the list view here. You can select the Lottie animation block, click on the vertical ellipsis. And I'm going to click on add before. I'm going to do a forward slash and I'm going to add a container. This time it's going to be a section. And we'll select the section block from Cadence. And immediately that block comes into play. I'm going to move over to the right here, go to content max width, and I'm going to set a max width of 400 pixels. Okay, it's going to bring that in for me. Then I'm going to grab the Lottie animation and I'm going to go ahead and drag it into that section. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and click on save. And then now if we preview the page, 
we can see now that we have a much better presentation for our content inside of this section. Okay, this is great. Next, what we need to do is go ahead and add the right hand content, which is going to be some text and a dedicated contact form. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our content to the right side. So I'm going to go back here to the uh, editor and I'm going to select the second section. First thing I want to do is go ahead and add some padding to this. So let's go, go to advanced in the settings here. Go to padding. I'm going to go ahead and link the sides here and we're going to set this to XL, the same as we had for the left side here. Okay, next I want to go ahead and add my text. So I'm going to click on the plus sign. We're going to add a text block from Cadence and the text is going to say, need to get a hold of us. And we'll go ahead and center that text. And then I'm also going to duplicate this text. So I'll click on the vertical ellipsis, click on duplicate. And we're going to change this to a paragraph text. And we're going to say, uh, send us a message and we'll get right back to you. Okay, now all that remains is for us to go ahead and add our form to this here. But I do want to bring this a little bit closer together. So I'm going to go ahead and select the first text here, go to advanced. And let's eliminate the default margin there at the bottom. And then we'll just go ahead and add just one XXS margin there. Next, I'm going to click at the end of the second text here block here. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. That'll give us a new block line. I'm going to do a forward slash. And now it's time to add our form. So I'm going to go ahead and type the words form. And I'm going to select the advanced form from Cadence Blocks. So here it's going to ask us to select a form, but we don't have any forms created yet. So we're going to click on create new. It's going to present us with these initial layouts and we just want a contact form. So let's go ahead and just select the first one here. And we want the basic and we'll just call it contact form and click on create. So now we have a very simple form here with the name and email field in line with each other. The message field is right below and then the submit button. We're going to go ahead and customize this so that this is a stacked form, meaning that all of the fields are stacked on top of each other. If we look over here to the left where we have it open in list view, you'll see the structure of this form. So there is a row layout here at the very top. And then in the first section, we have the name field. In the second section, we have the email field and then the message and the submit uh, buttons right after that. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just, I'm going to set it up so that this email field is directly below the name field. I'm going to do that from here in the list view. Just go ahead and select the email field here and I'm going to go ahead and drag it right into that next section and drop it there. So you'll see it reflected here, okay? So now we have this open uh, section, which we no longer need. I'm going to select the row layout move over here to the right and here where the columns are set to two, I'm going to go ahead and reduce it to one. All right. So now we have our name field, our email field and our message field. The other thing that I want to do as well is I want to create some spacing between the name and the email field here. That's going to happen here in the section inside of the row layout. So I'm going to select the section here, move over here to the right and add a vertical gap of small and let's create a nice space there. Okay. Uh, let's see what it looks like if we make that medium. All right, that looks more in line with the uh, message and submit button here. So let's keep that uh, here at the section. Let's just keep that at medium, okay? All right, the other thing that I want is I want to add placeholders to these fields. So I'm going to select the name field, move over here to the right, and I want to make this required. And uh, here we're going to have a placeholder. The placeholder is going to say, enter your name. And then on the email field, we'll do the same thing. Add a placeholder that'll also say, enter your email address. Okay. And then in the message field, we're going to add a placeholder that says, how can we help? All right. So all that looks good. Next, what I want to do is I want to remove the labels from these. Okay. So that it's just the text that are inside of the fields. So I'm going to select the name field, move over to the right, here where it says show label, I'm going to go ahead and toggle that off. We'll do the same thing for the email field and we'll do the same thing for the message field. Now it's important that uh, if you do that, let's go ahead and just copy this name here. If you do that, we want to go to the advanced settings here and under the extra settings, I like to fill this out completely. So the field name is going to be name, the area description is going to be name field. Okay? Uh, and then I'll repeat that for the email address. Go to advanced, extra settings, 
field name is going to be email and the area description will be email address field. And then for the how can we help, go to advanced extra settings. Field name will be the message field or just message. And the area description will be the message field. And the other thing that I want to do is I like to style this uh, a little bit better. So what I want is I want the fields to have a sort of a, a more subtle look to them. Okay. And the background, the background of each field to have some color to it. So I'm going to go ahead and select the form. Okay. Or you can come over here to list view, select the form itself. So you're in form settings, move over to the right. We'll go to style and here you'll see the input field styling. Okay. The first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a background color. So here we have the input background. Let's go ahead and select the color selector here. And I'm going to select that. I want to use the subtle background there. Okay. Then the other thing that I want to do is I want to eliminate that border. Okay. So to do that, if you look down here, you'll see border settings. I'm going to go ahead and click in the field here and I'm going to type a zero. It's going to eliminate that border. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to add a little bit more padding to those fields. So I'm going to come over here to the advanced field settings, click on the drop down arrow, scroll down, and you'll see the input padding over here. Go ahead and unify the sides and let's go ahead and add 12 pixels there. Okay. All right. That looks pretty good. Actually, let's see how it looks with 16 pixels. Okay. Even better. All right. So now all I need to do is go ahead and align this a little bit better so that it's not uh, so wide. Now, my favorite way to be able to do this is to actually add the form block inside of a row block just to give me some more uh, customization capability. So with the form block selected, I'm going to go ahead and click on the vertical ellipsis, click on add before, do a forward slash, type the words row, select the row block from cadence blocks. We want this to be a one column row. And then Immediately right here, I'm going to click on the inner content width, and I'm going to go ahead and set that to 400 pixels. And then I'm going to select the form again, and this time I'm going to go ahead and drag it right inside of that row. Okay, it's going to center everything here nicely for me. Okay, then the final thing I want to do is I want to customize the submit button. So first, I'm going to change the text to say, so select the submit button, and we'll change the text to say send message. And then I also want this to be full width. So with the button selected, move over here to the right to settings and select button width. We want that to be full. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So now everything actually looks uh, very well put together, uh, very organized and nice and compact. But the true test will be checking this out on the front end to make sure that it still looks good. So let's go ahead and save our work and then view it on the front end. All right. So we have a pretty nice maintenance mode page here. Okay. Now, one thing we do want to do, so here there's some alignment issues here between the text here and this text. And I think that this is too far down. I would love for this to be a little bit higher up. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to go back to the editor here. And uh, over here, I'm going to go ahead and just completely zero out the bottom margin. And then the other thing that I want to do here is I want to move everything here. Uh, a little bit higher. So I know that in this section, I have everything vertically aligned to be in the middle and that's what's controlling this. So to fix that, I'm going to go ahead and just change that back to align to the top. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a spacer to the top of this. It's going to help me push this down exactly where I want it. So I'm going to select that section that we had uh, added here that contains that Lottie animation. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on the vertical ellipsis, click on add V4, do a forward slash, and we're going to do a search for spacer. So just go ahead and type the word spacer and you'll see the spacer divider from cadence. Go ahead and select that. Okay. So now I have the spacer divider here and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, extend this here by pulling on that little circle. And I'm just going to bring it right to about where that Lottie animation, the top of the Lottie animation will be, which is about right here. Okay. And then I'm going to move over to the right. I'm going to go ahead and disable the divider by clicking on this toggle here. Okay. And then I'm now going to save the work and then we'll view it on the front end. All right. And that looks a lot better. Everything's much more balanced. Okay. 
All right, so one thing that we do need to do is we need to make sure that this looks good on a mobile device. So next, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and take care of the responsive editing for this page. And then we'll take a look at it on the front end and see what it looks like on our mobile devices. Okay, so to implement our mobile editing, we're gonna go ahead and go back to the editor here. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that this page looks good on a tablet and it also looks good on a mobile device. But there is one thing that I do want to make sure of here with this form. So there's a little bit of an imbalance between the form buttons and the fields here. And that's because we have set these fields to, to have some padding, but the button uh, is very narrow. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna go ahead and select the submit button, move over here to the right, and under the typography settings for this button, I'm gonna go ahead and set that to uh, uppercase. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to go to the advanced settings here, click on the padding and link the sides here. And we're just going to increase the padding to extra small, which is about 16 pixels, the same amount of pixels that we have for the field here. Okay, so now everything looks nice and balanced. And now we can proceed with our mobile editing. So to be able to edit this uh, on mobile, there are a number of ways to be able to do that. You can use the icon, the view icon over here. If you click on this icon, you can switch between desktop, tablet, and mobile. You can also preview in a new tab from this icon as well. Okay, so this is the fastest way to be able to do it. You can also do it anytime you're selecting a container or a section, you'll see the mobile viewports here. So right now you can see that this is a desktop, this is the tablet, this is the mobile device. Okay, so let's just go ahead and you can choose anyone that, that works best for you. I'm gonna go ahead and use the view icon here and I'm gonna select tablet view. And we can see immediately that on tablet view, uh, this doesn't look very good. So let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna open this up in list view and I wanna make sure I have the parent row layout selected because that's what's controlling the columns here or the sections. I'm gonna move over here to the right and under the layout tab, see over here the layout that we have and right now this is a equal layout side by side what I want to do is I want to go ahead and set this to a collapsed layout on a tablet so I'm gonna come over here click on collapse to rows and it's gonna go ahead and collapse this nicely for us okay so this looks much more presentable the other thing that I noticed as well is that we have a lot of spacing over here and that's namely because of this spacer divider so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the spacer divider itself move over to the settings on the right and you can actually change the height on tablet but what I'd actually prefer is not having a spacer at all so to be able to do that you can just go to the advanced settings and it has visibility settings and what we want to do is we want to go ahead and hide this on tablet and also hide it on mobile and this way when you're looking at it on a tablet or on a cell phone you're not gonna see this uh, space here okay it's just gonna be the text over here okay all right so so far this looks uh, Good, now let's take a look at it on a cell phone or a smaller mobile device with a smaller viewport. So I'm gonna come over here, click on the view icon and select mobile. Okay, so we've already taken care of the spacer. And if we scroll down here, we can see we have some issues with our text and we have some issues with our padding and spacing here. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So for the uh, text here, or actually for the spacing, I'm gonna go ahead and select the section here, move over to the right, go to advanced, and this is set to XL right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and unify the sides here, and let's actually set this to a little bit more narrow. So we'll say, um, we'll say medium, okay? So 32 pixels all around. The other thing that I wanna do is I also wanna make sure that this text looks good. So I'm gonna select the text over here, move over here to the right, and uh, let's change this to say three rim okay so that looks a lot better okay um, and the text here is just fine the text here is just fine uh, maybe there may be too much spacing here so I'm gonna come over here to advanced and this is already set to none go to the main text here go to advanced and on top there's a small amount of padding there so let's just go ahead and we'll zero that out okay all right, the bottom looks fine. All right, let's scroll down. And so over here, we also have a lot of padding, a little bit too much. So I'm gonna select this section over here, move over to the right, go to advanced, 
and we're going to unify the sides and we're going to do the same thing we're going to go ahead and set this to medium okay now when we go back to the tablet that still looks good mobile device that looks a lot better okay okay uh, then next here we we'll take a look at our form our form looks great uh, no issues there so so far this looks good now let's actually see it in actual view uh, utilizing the mobile device simulator on the browser. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and then we'll go back to the front end. I'm going to refresh the screen here and then I'm going to right click in the browser, click on inspect. That's going to take me uh, to the Chrome developer tool here. And if you toggle this off, you'll see what it looks like here. If you want to see the mobile version, just click on this icon here. And this is what it would look like on a iPhone 12. So notice that there's some gap here, some spacing here, and I know exactly where this is coming from. We'll take care of that. And then if we look at it on an iPad tablet, okay, this looks fine. However, our mobile device looks a little strange. So let's go ahead and fix that. So what I'm going to do is go back here. So that issue is coming from the row layout. So in the beginning, when we're setting this up, we actually set the alignment here to align everything in the middle. However, we have multiple sections layered on top of here. So we're going to actually make have to make the alignment a little bit more local. So what we're going to do here is going to go ahead and toggle this off from the row layout. So I'm going to go ahead and just set it back to align to the top, which is the default. And then you notice how everything kind of shifts uh, to the top here and we've lost a little bit of our alignment, but that's okay we can go ahead and uh, fix that. What we're going to do is we're just going to shift the alignment responsibility to the intersection of the actual row itself, okay? Or the sections of the row, row themselves. So those are these sections right here. So if I, if I were to close these, you can see we have the row and we have these two sections, okay? So all we need to do is just shift that responsibility of the alignment into uh, the sections. And then that will give us an ability to be able to actually change that uh, even by device. So we're going to select the first section, which is this one right here. We've already turned it off from this row layout. So if I turn it back on, it's going to look correct, but then we're going to have a problem when we look at it on a mobile device. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to the default, just aligning it to the top. I'm going to go ahead and select the section, uh, the left section here and here from the short menu, or you can also do it from here, from the alignment, just set the vertical alignment here to the middle, okay? Or you can click here and do it, okay? So that's taking care of that section. Now let's take care of the right section. I'm gonna go ahead and select this section and we're gonna go ahead and implement the same thing, okay? Excuse me, uh, align the middle, okay? So now we're right back where we were uh, and everything looks correct, okay? So now if we look at this on a tablet, everything looks correct. Look at it on a mobile device, everything looks correct. So now let's actually take a look at it on the front end. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Go back to the front end here. We're gonna refresh our mobile device here and now everything looks the way that it's supposed to look on a mobile device. Okay, so this will be on the iPhone. Let's take a look at it on the Samsung. Okay, that still looks fine. All right, so on our mobile device, it looks great. Let's set this just responsive. And so we can kind of see here, this is what it will look like on your desktop. Okay. It's really large there. And uh, if we bring this together, tablet, mobile device. All right. Okay. And with that, that will conclude the build out of our maintenance page using the new maintenance mode feature in the Cadence uh, Pro theme add-on. Next, what we're going to do, I'm going to do this really quickly, is we're going to build a version that is a coming soon page. And it's essentially exactly the same, uh, same uh, tools. The only thing that's different is what you're naming it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And then we'll wrap up this tutorial. So for the coming soon page, the one we're going to build is this one right here. And uh, this is a really nice one. It's very simple, straight to the point. We have the coming soon text, which has a gradient color. And then we have the countdown and then the opt-in, uh, pill-shaped opt-in here, which we're going to be building again from scratch. 
And then uh, we also have our social media icons here as well. So it's about six blocks that make this up. So this should be very quick and uh, fairly easy to build. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, recreate this coming soon page. We're gonna go back to the dashboard here and under appearance, cadence, maintenance mode, go ahead and click on add new maintenance mode. This time we're gonna select a coming soon page and we're gonna ignore the uh, preset templates here and just click on start blank. We're gonna go ahead and name our dark mode coming soon page, all right? And then here in the block line, go ahead and do a forward slash and type the word row. We're gonna select our row layout container. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to full width and I want the inner column or the inner content max width to be at 720 pixels, so it's narrow. And we just want a one column section in there, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and select the row, move over here to the right, go to advanced, go to the structure settings. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and set the minimum height to be at 100 view height. So just change the unit here to VH and we will add 100 here. We're gonna set the inner column height to 100%. And then I'm gonna open up this in list view and we're gonna select the section here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the vertical alignment to be in the middle. Okay, just gonna place all our content here in the middle. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the row layout over here, go over to the right, go to our style, go to text color settings, and I'm gonna set the text color to white. Then I'm going to set the background color to our darkest color here. Let's go ahead and close this out. I'm gonna click on the plus sign in the section here, select the text block from cadence, and we're gonna go ahead and write uh, coming soon, okay? And let's go ahead and center that. We'll change the designation to an H1. I'm gonna move over here to the right and I'm going to select that I want the text to be 3X large. So as big as possible. Okay, next what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and uh, set this to have a gradient color. So over here there's a toggle underneath the background color. Let's go ahead and toggle that on. That'll give you the gradient settings here. So for the first color, let's go ahead and set that to a very light blue. And then for the second color, let's set that to one of our accent colors. So we can use, uh, let's use the second one here, okay? All right, one of the options that you have is to go ahead and uh, set this to be a linear gradient or you can also have a radial gradient. So let's go ahead and set that to a radial one. That's gonna put the highlight there in the middle and then the low light will be subtly on these sides. Okay, so you can see that over here, it looks really good. All right, next what we wanna do is go ahead and add our countdown timer. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my cursor right next to that text block, hit the enter key to give me a new block line. I'm gonna do a forward slash, start typing the words count, and you'll see the countdown block from cadence. Go ahead and select that. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna go ahead and set this to be centered. And then over here on the right hand side are gonna be the settings. And let's just go ahead and set these settings to, let's just give this a couple days out. And then for the style, I'm looking for the number settings. I'm gonna go ahead and select the number settings here. And I wanna change the color. I want it to be a very light blue as well, like that, okay, great. And then I also want the size to be a lot larger, maybe even 2X large is fine. And then over here in the font weight, I'm gonna set it to a bold font weight, okay. And maybe we can reduce the size, uh, no, 2X large is great. All right, so the other thing that I wanna do here as well is I want to reduce the gap here. So I'm gonna select the coming soon, go over to advanced, under the margin, there's a default bottom margin here. Let's go ahead and zero that out. That brings it a lot closer, okay? I'm gonna select the countdown again, move over to the right, go to the general tab, go down to the countdown layout, Let's open that up and we'll scroll down here. You'll see the countdown pretext. And what I want to do is go ahead and add some text here. So we'll say launches in and we'll do a colon. Okay. So launches in and this is the timer here. Okay. So far, so good. Next, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a form block to this. So I'm going to go ahead and select the countdown timer, click on the vertical ellipsis, click on add after. We'll add a little bit of text first. So do a forward slash, type the words text, select the text block from cadence. Let's go ahead and center that. We'll change the designation from an H2 to a paragraph. 
and we'll say here get notified when the website launches and I move over here to the right go to advanced go to the margin here I already know there's a default margin there I'm gonna go ahead and zero that out then I'm gonna select that text click on the vertical ellipsis click on add after do a forward slash and this time I'm looking for the advanced form from cadence blocks let's go ahead and select it and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new form and this time I'm gonna go ahead and do a skip blank I like to create this from scratch so we'll call this our notify me form and we'll create so here I can go ahead and just build this form out from from scratch so I'm gonna do a forward slash here we're gonna add a row layout and I want a two column row in the first row here we're going to have a so that's gonna be the email field I'm gonna move over here to the right actually let's label this first so we'll call this our email and then over here on the right under the placeholder we're going to add enter your email address and then I'm going to go to the advanced and go to extra settings and we'll give it the field name of email and the area description of email address field okay I'm going to click on view form settings and from here what I want to do is I want to go ahead and style this a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and click on style scroll down under the input settings over here let's go to our advanced field settings go to input padding I'm going to unify the sides here and I'm going to add this to be 16 pixels so it's nice and thick the other thing that I want is I want the field here to be a little bit longer okay and I want the button to be shorter so the button's going to occupy this field right over here so I'm going to go ahead and select it, select the row, or open this up in list view to make it easier. I'm going to select the row layout here, move over to the right, and I actually want a row layout that's more like this. So now in here, we're going to go ahead and add our button. I'm going to click on the plus sign, do a search for submit. We'll add our submit button. So if you notice here, in trying to add the submit button, it says only one submit button block is allowed. Now this is currently a bug that's happening as of this recording, but I know that the folks at Cadence are working on this. So to get around that, just go ahead and click on save and uh, let's view the maintenance mode page. Okay, so when you view it, then we're gonna go back to the editor again and uh, this should reset everything for us. So we'll go ahead and click on the plus sign now and do a search for the submit button, click on it and you'll see now that it allows you to go ahead and add the button. So once you add the button, go ahead and type notify me, okay? And over here, let's select this field again, move over to the right, and I'm gonna disable the label so that everything kind of aligns well. Now with the button, I want it to have the same properties as the regular field. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the button, move over to the right, click on button width, we'll set that to full, then go to the advanced, unify the padding sides here, and we'll set this to XS, okay? So that should be about the same as the field here, okay? I'm gonna open this up in list view. Go ahead and select the form, open up the form, select the row layout. I'm gonna move over here to the right, go to the uh, advanced. And what I wanna do here is I'm gonna remove all the padding. And what I wanna do next is go to the layout and under the column gutter, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that spacing there by setting the column gutter to none. All right, this also creates some space between this text and the field itself. So I'm gonna select the text block here, move over to the right, go to advanced, under the margin here where we have the bottom now we can go ahead and add a little bit of spacing there so about small should do it okay now we can go ahead and style this to make it into a pill uh, format opt-in okay so I'm gonna go ahead and select the input field for the email I'm gonna look over here to the right that should select the form for me if not select it here in list view then click on style now you'll see the input settings we're gonna scroll down and you'll see the border settings here we're looking for the border radius under the border radius for the top value over here we're going to go ahead and add the number 50 to that so 50 pixels for the right we're going to set that to zero for the bottom we're going to set that to zero and for the left we're going to set it to 50 that should give us a nice pill format here then for the button we're going to select the button move over to the right go to style here where we have the border radius we're going to set the top to zero we're going to set the right to 50 pixels the bottom is going to be 50 pixels and the left is going to be zero okay so now we have this nice little uh, pill format the other thing that we want is also we want the uh, notify me to be all caps and we also want the background here to be a gradient background so let's start with the text first so i'm going to select the button again move over to the right go to the topography settings scroll down 
under the letter case, we're going to set that to all caps. Then still under the style settings here where we have the background color, we're going to select a gradient background color type. And then from here, the first color, we're going to go ahead and set that to be our highlight color. And then for the second one, that's going to be a light blue. So we can just select that here from the color picker and get this as light as we possibly can. Now we just need to add our social media links. One thing I do want to do though is go and create some more spacing here. So I'm going to select this text, move over to the right, go to advanced, and let's add a small margin to the top there. Give it some more breathing room. Okay, so far this is looking very good. Next what we want to do is go ahead and add our social media links. Okay, I want that to be in its own uh, section or, its, or in its own row. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and select the form, click on the vertical ellipsis, click on add after to give me a new block line. I'm going to do a forward slash and we're going to go ahead and add a section here. So this would be a section block. Okay, I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to add a text block to that. We're going to change the designation here and let's go ahead and change this to a paragraph and we'll say uh, follow us. I'm going to hit the enter key do a forward slash, start typing the words icon. That's going to give you the icon block from Cadence. Go ahead and select the icon and then move over here to the right. We're going to reduce the size of this icon to 25 pixels. And then in the icon field itself, we're going to change this one to Facebook. And uh, let's just select uh, one of these. Let's select uh, this Facebook here. Or actually, why don't we select this one and do something a little bit different. So we'll select this one. We'll make it uh, stacked. We'll give it a border color of white, a hover color of, um, let's just make this our accent color. And then the uh, icon color will be white. And this will be accent color here. And then uh, for the padding for this, let's go ahead and reduce that by one. So actually one more, there we go. Actually one is fine. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. So now I'm going to select the full icon container. You can see that right over here, the icon container. That's going to give me this plus sign over here in the short menu. Go ahead and click on it. And then we'll do it one more time. Select the icon container, click on the plus sign. And now we have two more identical styled social media links. Select the second one, move over to the right. And we'll just change the icon here. Let's change that to Twitter. We'll select the X icon. And then we will select the third one here. And we'll change this to uh, Instagram. Okay, great. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and align these uh, in line with each other. So I'm going to select this section, move over to the right, change the flex direction here. Okay, I'm going to click on the text that says follow us, move over to the right, go to advanced, and under the margin here, I'm going to go ahead and zero out that bottom margin so that everything aligns correctly. And then from here, I'm selecting the section here, move over to the right, and for the alignment, we're going to go ahead and center everything. All right, now everything is centered. And our section is pretty much complete. So at this point, we're going to click on save and we'll publish our work here. All right. And so far this looks uh, really good. Let's see how this looks on mobile before we preview it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the row layout here. So I'm going to click on the main row layout here. And we can click on the view icon. Look at it on the tablet. Tablet, it looks really good. Look at it on a mobile device. We're seeing some breakage here and uh, over here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that. So the way we're going to fix this is first, let's start with the countdown. I'm gonna select the countdown here, move over to the right, go to style, and we wanna look at the number settings. And what we wanna do here is we wanna change the size of this. So large is uh, big enough for it or extra large. So extra large is good. Okay. And then here, the form, as you know, is a row layout. Since this is a row layout, let's go ahead and select it, move over and let's uh, open this up here. Make sure we have the row layout selected for the form. And let's see how this looks if we set it up this way. Okay. All right. We see, we still see that there's a little bit of breakage here. That's okay. We can go ahead and customize this even further. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the button move over to the right and go to style and I'm going to set the font size to small and then I'm going to select the field here click on view form settings go to style and we're going to set the input size here to small as well okay and you still see there's a little bit of an imbalance uh, happening here so to be able to fix that let's select the field view form settings and go to form style input size here let's go to the advanced field settings here 
And here we have the input padding. And let's see how this looks at 15 pixels. That looks a little bit better. We may need to adjust this when we look at it on the actual mobile device, but so far this looks really good. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks uh, right now. I do think this is a little bit too prominent still, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this icon, move over here to the right, and remember, we're looking at this on a mobile device, so the icon size can be a little bit smaller, so we can set this to 12 pixels, and our padding here, let's see here, padding could be, and the padding's just fine. The padding can be a little bit smaller. Yeah, our padding is just fine. So just set this to XSS, click on this, select the copy styles, and then apply it to the other ones. Paste styles, paste styles. Okay, so we've made a bunch of changes now. All right, so, so far this looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and save the changes. Before I preview it, I'm going to look at it on the tablet again to make sure that everything still holds correctly, which it does. And then I'm also going to view it on our desktop and everything still holds. Okay, so now let's go ahead and view it on the front end. Okay, so on the front end, this looks pretty good. There's some spacing issues over here. Let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna come over here, select the row layout, or actually we'll select this section over here. And uh, from the section, go to advanced, go to the top margin here, and we'll add small margin, save, preview. Okay, it looks a lot better. Okay. And just like that, we now have our coming soon. And uh, we've also built the maintenance page. And you can see this looks really good. Now let's take a look at it on mobile device. So right click, inspect. And on our mobile device, still looks great. Okay. Let's look at it on, yeah, no matter where we look at it, it responds beautifully. All right, excellent. And so with that, that will conclude the build out of a coming soon page. So uh, this was pretty fun. We actually built out a, uh, we built a coming soon page and we also built out a maintenance page. So which one will actually show up when you visit the website? We've been building everything as an admin so far, right? So let's look at this on the front end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the URL and we're gonna go ahead and open this up in an incognito window. Here's our incognito window. Let's go ahead and view this when we're not logged in. Okay, so when we're not logged in, we're seeing the coming soon page that we created, which is the most recent maintenance mode type page that we've created. Okay, so but what if we wanna see the maintenance page instead? If you wanna see the maintenance page instead, there are a couple of options here. We'll wanna go back to the page and let's go ahead and go back. Let's go back to our dashboard here. So you see here where we have the maintenance page. So, so far we were looking at the coming soon page. Okay, but we wanna see that maintenance page instead. So if you wanna see the maintenance page instead, let's go ahead and click on edit. We'll go to page settings. And here where we have the display priority, I'm gonna change this over to a one. When you change it to one, it now has a higher priority than the coming soon page. And because it has a higher priority, now when we view this in an incognito window, when I refresh the page, we'll now see the scheduled maintenance page instead, okay? So you can switch between the two just by toggling on the display priority. Okay, and with that, that'll conclude this tutorial on how to create a maintenance page or a coming soon page using the new maintenance mode feature in the Cadence Pro theme add-on. I wanna go ahead and say thank you very much for watching this video and i'd like to invite you if you found any value in the video to go ahead and smash that like button and if you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed to the channel please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and remember to hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time i release videos like this if you enjoy step-by-step -step wordpress tutorials on cadence or other plugin and theme suites then you definitely want to be following the channel and stay tuned for upcoming videos that I'll be making and populating to the channel. I want to also go ahead and thank the people who have been supporting the channel, both with your likes, your subscribes, and buying me a coffee. I really appreciate it and I am grateful and humbled by it and I look forward to interacting with you in the future. If you have any questions on the tutorial or just any questions from me in general, please feel free to leave those questions in the comments section below. Or if you have a comment, you're also welcome to leave that 
in the comments section below. I do read the comments and I do respond as quickly as I can. Once again, thank you very much for your support. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.